Well, this is gonna suck. Can we beat Remnant 2 without attacking on its hardest difficulty? That means no shooting, no melee attacks, and no grenade. Only thing my pacifist buddy can do is summon friends to his aid, such as the summoner minions, the handler dog, engineer turret, and three mods, the space crab, the familiar, and the root lash. Initially, this video was going to be of my journey on my regular character, but since I'm clearly a masochist on a chase for good content, I figured, why not start on a fresh level 1 character? And so we did, meet today's main character, the pacifist. Surely, this journey won't be too bad, right? Anyways, I decided to start off as a summoner. My goal is going to be to use both the summoner and the engineer, as the summoner has some solid melee options and the engineer has some solid ranged options, and the engineer archetype engram will be a much easier find. And so, our pacifist journey starts. My first move will be to hit up the shops and see all of the necessary scrap I'll be requiring to strengthen my character early on, as he will definitely need it. I find that I can afford both the bright steel ring and the black cat band, which should make my journey a tiny bit easier. But man, shortly after stepping into the first zone, it was very clear that this would be a very long journey. The first zone started out with a huge issue. All of the enemies were flying, and I couldn't hit them with anything I had in hand. But on the bright side, it wasn't a rude, which meant I'd be able to get my hands on the engineer sooner than I had planned. But my objective right now was to push to the boss to get a feel of how weak we currently are. And as I progressed through, I came across the WD-109 Aberration which made it very clear that my damage was far too low. Killing the WD-109, which meant hiding behind pillars while my minions slowly damaged it down, quite literally took 15 minutes to kill. But I figured I'd still push towards the boss checkpoint and worry about getting stronger around there. So I did. Very slowly. I mean, very slowly. But eventually, I did manage to get there. And guess what? Yup. That is a flying boss. And no, I do not have any ranged attack. So I was stuck. I had no summons that could attack flying targets, so there was only one option left for me. Getting my summoner to level 5, which would unlock the flyer. So with this only option that was left for me, it's time to farm both resources, tomes, and a lot of XP. One eternity later. Drive for several hours, I clear as much as I can at an excruciatingly slow pace, loot just about every tome I can find, I purchase myself a healing shot, some XP concoctions, and finally, eventually after a while of suffering, I finally managed to hit level 5. Mind you, I know this looks like it didn't take that long, but this took me several hours. So then, it was time to try again the flying boss, and once again, it was impossible. The stupid flyers would never target the boss once it got brought down to the floor, so it just kept resetting in an infinite loop without me being able to do any damage to the boss itself. What was I to do? I know. I'll buy the Handler Engram, but I was a little bit short on Lumini Crystals. But since I wasn't able to clear the Vault of the Formless earlier when I was trying to level up, this time was the perfect time to do so. And so that's what I did. I cleared out the Vault of the Formless and cleared out everything that I wasn't able to do before I had the Flyer. And with that being done, I was able to muster up enough Luminite Crystals to finally buy the Handler. Now back to the boss, I was finally doing a lot more damage every time the Primogenitor fell to the ground. But it was still such a horrible time. So the way I pulled this off was by having my flyer slowly damage down the boss, forcing it down to the ground. And upon falling to the ground, I command my good boy to bite it down and squeeze in as much damage as possible before I'd have to redo it all again. Thankfully, this fight is incredibly easy to dodge and stay alive, so it was just a matter of waiting. After several hours from starting this journey, the first boss was finally down. Upon reaching the next area, I only had one goal in mind to find the engineer engram, which I used my own videos as reference to find out areas which I should focus my search on. And without Explorer, this was quite an insane task. But eventually, I found the area I was looking for. I looted the alien device and brought it back to Wallace. And I finally had the engineer class I needed to do some damage. Now we could really start to make some progress. I had a much easier time clearing out some side locations. The only downside was I wasn't finding any good items. But other than that, things were finally looking up. I was even able to take on a couple of aberrations down with much more ease. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. So after getting to the second major boss, the Custodian Eye, I got a very quick beating. 
which I decided was time to upgrade my armor, go a little bit of shopping, and then try to take him on again. The boss then became immediately much easier, and the fight itself wasn't too bad. Dodging the mechanics was quite easy, the only issue was my damage. Once again, it was very low, which made this fight last quite a while, but my trusty friends once again proved their worth. All I had to do was stay clear of its laser beams and have my turret take out any purple orbs that would try to attack me, and then focus down the custodian eye. And with that, the second major boss was down. Immediately upon taking the eye out, you get brought up to Shahala, and so I decided to take him on to see whether I was strong enough yet for that fight. And to my pleasant surprise, due to all my armor and the boss's power level being so low, this made for a very forgiven fight, which I could very easily tank while dodging as much as I could. My goal was to always have a turret up when Shahala's weak spot was vulnerable and allow my minions to slowly grind down the boss as I just focused on dodging. Eventually, it got brought down, and with that, we finished off the rood. And upon finishing the first world, we're brought onto the second world, the labyrinth. But before that, we must upgrade the relic charges as they will be very useful because of my summoner and my engineer's relic perk, as they will be of huge help. But I'm short on scrap for the relic charges, as well as the space crabs mod I've been meaning to buy, so it's time to head back to the labyrinth. I head back to the labyrinth and continue progressing forward. I also take the side road up to go against the Bastion. Fun fact, I could just sit far away as he fought my minions and I truly didn't have to do anything other than just sit and watch. But then after some time comes the Labyrinth Sentinel, the boss I was most afraid of for this run, and soon I found out for a very good reason. The engineer turret aims dead in the center of each cube. It's enough to take down all the ground cubes, but the problem comes with the flying ones. It can't hit the weak spots for pretty much all of them. I also knew the impact cannon and the flamethrower turrets both didn't work in this boss, so it wasn't worth the effort of leveling it up. The closest thing I could do to take out those flying cubes were the flyers, but even with those, it was impossible. It could occasionally take out one weak spot here or there for this cube here, but for all of the other ones, they couldn't seem to hit the weak spots. Base grabs also didn't work, and from experience, I knew the familiar mod wouldn't have been able to hit it either. Sadly, our pacifist buddy would have to wield a weapon and take out the cubes himself. After the labyrinth, it was time to find out the starting worlds for both Lhasa and Yasha. And I come to find out that for Yasha, I'll be going through the Red Throne, which would mean I would fight the Corruptor, and for Lhasa, I'll be going through the Moral Parish, which means I'll be fighting the Nightweaver soon enough. So my next step was to head back to War 13 and go a little bit of shopping. I sold all of my crafting materials as I won't be upgrading any of my weapons, since I won't use them of course, and after buying some items, I decided to start off with Yasha, and I challenged the Queen and take down her guards, with surprisingly a lot of ease. I continue on about my way on Withering Weld, which right off the start, I'm met with a quite decent drop, the Soul Link which should help my survivability quite a bit, even though I'm more on the search for more damage, this is still a really good drop nonetheless. I come across the root nexus and I figured this will be very good as it drops the blood bond trait, which is extremely important to me, but shit. My minions don't really see the nexus as an enemy, so what the hell do I do? Instead of fussing too much about it, I'll just keep pushing on and progressing. I hit a couple of side zones with nothing decent but some XP, and I end up reaching Kaula's Rest, which after several attempts of reaching the boss, I finally am able to take on Kaula's Shadow, and he is equipped with both Regenerator and Empathy, which meant I truly just had to rely on my minions without ever using a relic. But as it turns out, by this time, my minions were hitting quite hard. The fact that I was progressing so slowly and killing everything on my path seemed to mean that my minions were getting quite strong as we progressed through. And with the help of a very hard hitting turret and reaver, there was another boss down. Once killing Kaula, I returned to the far woods, grinded some more XP as I pushed forward, 
hit a couple of side zones and found myself coming up against the mother mine, which was a real huge pain in the ass. The turret kept missing the shot, the minions constantly died to AoE damage, and it was frustrating enough to the point that I deemed fighting her not worth it. So much so that I just decided to ignore this fight and leave and continue progressing with the main story. Thankfully, this was an optional fight, so I didn't actually have to fight it. And with that, I pushed to the Great Bowl, and I decided it was time to try to take on the Corruptor. I tried to keep the Flamethrower with the Reaver to no luck. The Flamethrower literally did not want to shoot the Corruptor for whatever reason, and boy, was this fight frustrating. His regenerator suffix made it for a very difficult time. I died time and time and time again. I spent several hours on this fight, till I started slowly figuring out how I should approach it. But what I would actually do is put on the flamethrower, as it would do a lot of damage to his melee minion, and upon bringing his minion down, I'd return the heavy weapon by double pressing Q, and swap out for the Vulcan, and try to put it down, try to squeeze in some damage on the Corruptor before he returned. I also use the Reaver as bait for the Corruptor's large AoE attack while maintaining the Reaver alive. And through a lot of try and error, I was finally able to slay the Corruptor. And that meant all of Yesha was now downed. It was time to take on Lossom. I went back to War 13, got another Relic Charge, and traveled to Moral Parish. Traveling through it was quite a breeze as my Reaver was already hitting like a truck. And a few minutes into pushing through the campaign, I find myself in the Great Sewers, which meant I was about to take on the Bloat King. I was very skeptical about this fight, truly preparing for the worst as only my turret would even be able to reach and damage this boss. But upon getting to the room, it was quite a relief as I was actually able to beat it on the first try. The timing between the Bloat King's shock wave attack actually went pretty well with the Engineer Prime perk, and I felt like I had an infinite ammo perk up throughout the entire time. All I had to do was trigger the turret, aim at the target I needed to DPS down, and drop down when the shock wave came, and always keep a reaver down in the sewers as he would aggro all of those little sewer minions and make it a bit easier for me to rotate back up the ladder. And with that, Blow King was down. After the Blow King, I'm quickly met with the Asylum, which is one of my favorite areas in the game. Shortly after reaching its yard, I encounter the Ripsaw boss, which I make a very quick work out of. All I had to do was just keep my distance and my little guys would tear him up. Shortly after passing through the Asylum going on to Forsaken Quarter, there it was. The Huntress. This bitch made me run around chasing her around town for a good 20 minutes, just to find out she had gone back to sleep. What the f***? So I woke her up and had my little guys beat her up right there on the spot and made her go into a permanent sleep. And with that, I went back to War 13 once again, upgraded my Dragon Heart, and it was time to continue pushing on for the Red Prince. The Red Prince, I didn't expect too much of a difficult time, seeing as he was a ground boss, but his flames were still very annoying, and often led to my Reaver being killed and leaving me with nothing for a lot of the fight. But still, a few attempts later, using the Vulcan turret, I was able to eventually fight my way out of this one and once again the pacifist continues on his journey and with that it was time to take on one of the toughest bosses in all of remnant 2 the night weaver the last barrier before officially going to the root earth and the plan was the same as always using the vulcan turret with the reaver and i just made sure to keep the night weaver constantly within range of both now i think the flamethrower would have been better here had she not had the elemental resist but since she did the vulcan did its job quite well and i would have never guessed it but we actually first tried the night weaver a very pleasant surprise and my confidence was now at an all-time high that was nuts! I reached the root earth and it was all coming together. I cleared a bunch of mobs as well as the horde event with a lot of ease. Looted up a few new pieces which went well with my build and upon reaching the cancer my confidence was at an all time high and it paid off. I was dodging on all cylinders, I rocked the flamethrower even though he had elemental resist and the fight was just such a breeze. I only had to pay heavy attention to his one hit mechanic as my turret melted him down and the rest was business as usual. Cancer wasn't such a horrible boss this time around, so I kept on pushing, riding off that high horse, grab a few more items and the greatly useful probability cord and I'm once again feeling at an all time high. But then there's the venom. Venom beats my ass for quite a while. His empathy suffix means I can't relic boost my minions and I essentially can't self heal. I just have to dodge and rely entirely on my minion lifesteal from my soul link ring. But that was quite a pain in the ass and it took a little while 
but we managed. After a few tries, we downed Venom. And now, it was all up to the last boss, Annihilation. And with that, reality came crashing down fast. Annihilation is a flying bot, which meant my Reaver would be near useless and my Space Crabs mod would also be useless. The only thing I had going for me was my trusty turret. And so with that in mind, I failed and I failed and I failed again. Flyers were also useless as they got easily killed by AoE. At least the Reaver could stay alive a while longer, which meant my turret would gain extra skill damage due to the summoner trade. The biggest issue I had with this fight were the orbs. I could avoid most of the mechanics easily after a few tries, but these orbs, if my turret was not up, it would mean I'd get killed. So the timing had to be perfect and I would have to always have a turret up when the orbs came around. Or I could rely on my black cat band if it were off cooldown as it could bail me out of a quick death. But then after a lot of suffering and about an hour or two of gameplay, there was a sign of light. My dodges they started clicking one game, dodges after dodges after dodges. Suddenly, I found myself going up against this boss when he was nearly 20% health. Hit him with everything I had and I hit him hard. And I left him with 1 HP. My fingers were itching just wanting to shoot him just to finish it off. But I was dedicated to this run. But then, the orbs came. <coughs> but guess what? My black band was off cooldown and I got given one last opportunity, which I could not mess up. I now had 1 HP and so did the boss. And so I dodged and I dodged again. And I was finally able to get the turret on its feet on the ground and it was a wrap. We brought down Annihilation. After nearly two hours of attempting, we finally brought it down. And my pacifist had reached the end of his story. And with that, there you have it. Can you beat Remnant 2 without attacking? Yes and no. If the summons AI gets a little bit of tweaking with the Labyrinth Sentinel, then this is very doable. But until then, it seems that we'll have to continue shooting the Labyrinth Sentinel. But other than that, the game is definitely doable without attacking at all. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It took me a lot of tries to be able to pull this off. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.